Welcome to Cyberbulls. Lots of really fun topics today. First, we're going to cover Elon Musk sharing that he actually tried out already the production candidate of the Cybertruck. There's a leaked email that came out talking about uh, more about the precision of the Cybertruck required. Let's find out if that's real or not. We're also going to talk about the big topic that I'm most excited about is NVIDIA versus Tesla. <laughs> is NVIDIA the Tesla that we wish we had? We've got all the bulls with us today. This has been a while since we've had everybody here. My friends, the bulls, we've got Tesla Boom. Mama, uh, Alexander Mertz. We've got Christian. He's more of the uh, contrarian bull, right, Christian? Glad <laughs> to have right. you back. We've got Jeff. He calls himself the rational bull. <laughs> no, that's good. Everybody you calls call him the right. rational bull. <laughs> that's right. And then we've got Xander Sky. He's just moved to Austin. Glad to have him back. He's going to be able to participate more. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining Cyberbulls today. Awesome to be, to be here, here, Herbert. I think we should Great talk about you. right off the bat. Let's change it up. Let's talk right off the bat. NVIDIA. Tesla. Yes. Um, I love to get everybody's thoughts. NVIDIA had another monster quarter. Good. I mean, the, the stock has just been through the roof. Um, some people are saying NVIDIA is the new Tesla. So I'd like to get oh. everybody's thoughts on that. Um, Herbert, what do you have to say about it? Oh, you want to pick me first. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> So obviously I'm jealous. I'm absolutely jealous. I think that NVIDIA is deserving. Uh, they've skyrocketed because of sales. They are selling their chips. They're making tremendous money. Their uh, forward estimates have just skyrocketed. Uh, what is it from initially 12 to 18 billion? Um, this is a huge jump in one year. The demand for this is so wonderful. Now, am I, am I thinking that I wish that I had put all in on NVIDIA versus Tesla? I actually don't. I actually don't. Why? NVIDIA is an AI company. They're very, very successful. They're going to be very successful in the future. I see Tesla as an innovation company. They're going to have their own AI division. They have a chip similar to what NVIDIA is, although their business model is not going to sell it to customers. They're going to sell the AWS version of it, the SaaS version. They've got the robots. They've got the cars. They're basically taking the top industries, including AI, and... Um, betting on those and so it's taken a little bit longer for us and i think that that's where the frustration is but i have no doubt that tesla will eclipse nvidia in the future uh what do you think um alexandra why don't we go with you yep with pleasure so the the thing with nvidia that we're actually lucky not to not have as tesla investors is they had shrinking revenues if you remember from the first quarter of 2023. They have um, they have um, different time lag than than ours. So this is uh, about uh, uh, six quarters ago. They went from 8.3 billion of total sales down to 6.7, down to 5.9, and then stabilized around 6 billion for a while. Then came up to 7.2 billion, and now 13.5, and prognosting 16 billion after. So we really had this lower uh, part for about three quarters. That's where lots of people, including ARC, gave up on them. That was because the gaming sector suddenly shrank. It shrank from nearly 50% of their revenues down to 27%. As of today, it only makes up 18%, but the big part that has uh, completely exploded is the data center part. So all these numbers show us that um, they, you know, it wasn't without pain. You know, us Tesla investors, we look at them and go, oh my God, if we would just have this rise to 500 bucks now, you know, it's always painful when when you're stuck in something that doesn't move and something else moves, it's, it's close in the sector and you feel like, oof, should I have done half and half or whatever? But people forget how painful it was over the last 18 months for NVIDIA. There were moments where people were really stuck with NVIDIA and wanted to give up. This moment will come for Tesla. And I do predict it will come without this revenue hole that, that uh, NVIDIA had to go through. So it's just a matter of being patient and uh, getting them through the next couple of months. And then we will have the same effect for, for Tesla. What do you think, Jeff? Um, so they they've had a great quarter. Um, what's interesting is is they give so they gave guidance in what third week of May about a quarter that had you know five weeks left in it. I, I just always find this interesting about you know how and when they guide, and now they're giving you know increased guidance. So if you look at their lead times to order their component, I mean they're probably well north of twenty weeks. 
So they already know the demand side very well. It's, it's really for them coming down to uh, supply. And, 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 and the interesting thing is, is so these um, H100 chips, these are basically like mini computers. They're called a uh, chip on wafer on substrate. And what's on them is, is, you know, is their, their GPU silicon. Um, and then there's this high bandwidth memory from SK Hynix and Samsung. So you're saying like, well, what's the constraint? Why can't they make more of these? Why is it going to take till the end of 2024 for them to scale and have supply catch up to demand? Well, one of the reasons is demand has really moved up significantly um, with kind of the chat GPT kind of moment in, in November and uh, and really just all this this activity sprouting in AI. And the lead times for the, for the equipment to make these components is, is pretty long. Um, so Samsung, Hynix, they're constrained on the high bandwidth memory side. And then TSMC, so NVIDIA doesn't make parts. Everybody's like, can NVIDIA make enough? NVIDIA doesn't make parts. They're fabulous. Um, so they depend on TSMC in the situation. And, and you know, they're going to take a little bit of time to scale. But it's really the two constraints are the chip on wafer um, process um, on, on substrate. Uh, and then the high bandwidth memory from uh, Samsung and, and SK Hynix. So once they get those resolved, they should be, they're going to basically triple um, their capacity and over the next year. So it's going to be interesting. The other thing that people are concerned about is their double ordering. And when you're in a situation like this, in my experience, when you have something that's on global allocation, everybody in the world wants it. You're the only game in town that can make it. What you do is you don't allow people to double order. And the way you don't allow people to double orders, you put take or pay contracts out for your orders. Meaning like if you order, you know, if these things are, you know, I don't do the math on the call, but these things are pretty expensive, $25,000 to $30,000 each. And what you would do is you say, look, if you want to order a bunch of these, um, I'm going to give them to you in a certain time frame. And if you don't take them, you're, you're still going to pay me for them. And that's what a take or pay contract basically is. It can have different terms. So I don't think there's going to be a double ordering issue, to be honest with you. But I do think people are trying to buy up as much of these as possible globally. So that'll be, that'll be interesting to watch. You didn't answer my question, Jeff. Come on, buddy. <laughs> I asked you, I mean, Alexandra asked I'll the question. Do you, do you wish gotta... <laughs> that you bought NVIDIA instead of Tesla? Why is Tesla taking longer to catch up to where NVIDIA is now? And what do you think is going to happen in the future? Come on, Jeff. I didn't ask that at all. <laughs> oh, you did uh, answer have, it. I, you did. So I've owned, I've owned and traded Nvidia over the over many years. I think it's a great company. I've re, I've got into it again. I, I do have Nvidia. It's nowhere near uh, the, my Tesla position. Do I wish? Sure. It was it was basically 120 bucks in November. That would have been a a great a great move. But um, yeah, I have similar I have similar conviction and probably greater conviction for the future of Tesla just based on everything that they're doing, including, you know, Tesla right now they're buying, they're buying NVIDIA clusters for their, um, for their dojo, but eventually they're, you know, they're designing their own chip and they'll, you know, they'll go out to Samsung and TSMC and, and Fabit, and they'll be able to scale up their own AI solution. That's more tailored to what they're doing. So I kind of, I, I, I look at Tesla and I look at what they're doing and the fact that they, they, um, they replace the 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 computer that's that's in all of our Teslas today that's doing the self driving, you know, from the Nvidia solution. They've built their own custom solution, ju again, just like Nvidia does. Nvidia does that and sells that to the customers, and, and Tesla is doing that right now and putting their own cars. So I, I do feel good about my Tesla investment, you know, in the medium right. and long term. Obviously, of course, I want to be in a stock that quadrupled. Maybe, maybe ahead, Tesla Christian. should start selling chips, <laughs> not not just for themselves. Anyway. From a high level, like for me, like, okay, you know, I, I think about it a little differently. So NVIDIA, this is well done, right? Like this is like a tr over a trillion dollar company now. They just blew out last quarter and this quarter by a mile, right? Wall Street was completely off sides on this stock, right? Um, it's just monster, monster quarters, right? Execution. And the reason the stock is like, you know, going, what is it? Like a 5X or whatever in like a year or whatever it is. It's because the earnings, right? The revenue's exploding, the margins are accelerating, and the earnings, like we talked about before, Herbert, earnings drive the stock. So when you talk about Tesla, and I don't own, own NVIDIA outright, I just own it through like an ETF like the Qs, right? 
I still believe Tesla's long term, but you know, over the interim, Tesla stock hasn't done much since that monster run. Um, you know, that it had almost like a 20x in what it was like a year and a half, two years. Now it's kind of been nowhere for about two and a half years. So the reason the stock hasn't gone anywhere is because Tesla's earnings year over year is going to be lower. So it's just a reality, right? Like all this gain that we've seen is because Tesla went down and then we had some valuation growth on the AI theme and people knew the demand was kind of there for the cars. But Margins are going lower. Earnings are going lower year over year. So it's hard for Tesla stock to really accelerate and, and, and maintain it when you don't have the earnings power like NVIDIA is showing. NVIDIA is trading on a forward basis cheaper than Tesla is now, even though NVIDIA stock is exploding because the earnings are exploding you know, for the next 12 months. Where Tesla's earnings this year are, are flat to negative year over year. And I don't know about next year. Like if, 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 they, if they keep prices where they are or go a little bit lower and we don't get any of these call options developing, Tesla's earnings could be flat again. So you're really not going to get stock appreciation unless you get valuation on the multiple appreciation. And that's going to be hard to do when you have the Fed who still maybe, you know, we'll see tomorrow Jackson Hole, what the Fed's doing. The market's still a little worried about Jay Powell fighting inflation. So we, ha we have to worry because you're not going to get these um, valuation explosions anymore, unless the earnings there because of the high interest rates and the cost of capital going up, you know, 10 years going up. So these things need to stabilize for growth stocks to really, you know, catch a bid. So that's the way I see it at a high level. But I, I think I Tesla just, long term is a great company. Yeah. I just wonder if you wouldn't have had exactly the same thing to say about NVIDIA uh, a year and a half ago. I mean, the, the way you reason yeah, is always easy three days after good results and a good call, right? <laughs> it, 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 no, I don't, I don't I, own the stock. I'm not saying I, I know, knew it. I I'm just explaining why it's happening. It makes sense. I understand. But the people that, that kept in the video when it was complicated, as Jeff said, in November it was 120, now it's 500. The ones that sold at 120, believe me, they have regret and, and, yeah. uh, and, and a true fear of missing out today. Like Kathy Wood? <laughs> exactly, like my like my good old friend. But but uh, thank you. But the 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 issue is, you see this hole that I described earlier, right? The the um, that is what Nvidia investors had to go through. You don't have this with Tesla. Yes, it may stagnate. It may be a straight line for one or two quarters more, but it's not the same pain than when you have to go down. Right. So so I, I just want to point out it's always easier when you suddenly have a, a stock taking up and, and you feel like, oh, that would be nice being in it. Right. And you have another one where with Tesla, yes, it takes longer than we all wish. I mean, that's the one thing with Tesla. It always takes a little bit longer because they're, they're trying to make things happen that nobody tried before, like so many other things of, of Elon's yeah. companies. So this is the real moment for retail investors to please just be patient and relax. Because it, it, if you're nervous when you see NVIDIA going up, probably Tesla is not the right stock for you. So I, I got a quick uh, story of what happened to me when I saw NVIDIA. And I instantly went, Elon told us, Elon told us about NVIDIA. He yeah. said, we're going to buy every chip that, that, that you could send our way. So I looked at the, the stock price uh, on July 19th, um, which is when we had the earnings call. And NVIDIA was at 470. Uh, where did it close today? 471.63. Uh, I want to point out that uh, it sold off despite the insane guide for 16 uh, billion dollars which means that they're gonna you know they're already into the quarter they know their book as jeff uh, pointed out last time um and uh and so i think that it, you know them selling off we're, we're still under pressure the market's not uh, all um excited uh they are priced to perfection they're at 1.16 trillion dollars uh, their forward PE is 57, as Christian was saying, and Tesla's at 730 billion, um, and forward PE is 67. So um, the point, uh, much of my points were already covered, but I, I think that the Tesla earnings, when that, and this was Christian's point, when that earning ex explosion happens from uh, software as a service, I think you're going to have the same if, if anything it shows you that th this like crazy ride can happen during a tough macro for a company like nvidia and 
they're at you know 1.16 trillion so what's going to happen to tesla right the patience like alexander said just be patient it's coming um this is this is the opportunity to load if you're interested in growing your position uh, i'm doing it i'm uh, you know despite what we've been through with uh, I, I tweeted about this an 87 percent decline because of my options uh my terrible options strategy during a, a, a down market so um despite all that i i have so much conviction in in what we're seeing and uh once uh y- you know w- like Nvidia's priced to perfection. Tesla hasn't done much. It's moving sideways. So, and and if you look at the channel, it's it's at the bottom of the channel. So, um, I think once the earnings uh, start start printing, uh, Wall Street's going to get behind it, and, and we'll be all right. Yeah, the only thing I I'll say is uh, I don't know. Go, I don't ahead, know Jeff. if they're priced to. Per- oh, I'm sorry about that. We're audio delay. I don't know if they're priced to perfection. I mean, they they're they're forecasting 16 billion in revenue. And the you know the stock is what four seventy they're what are they're under thirty I guess right uh, on a forward P if you if that's updated so they're for, in terms of forward P they're well under um, where Tesla is there and by the way their gross margins are in the I think the seventies mid seventies so yeah. yeah so this is a great business the question is is um, nobody knows the demand for AI. Like they don't know the length of the demand. Like we know for many years, people are going to buy automobiles. We know um, that there's a demand for autonomy, safety, and so forth. There's just, there's a question is, is like, what does the demand for this look like? And then what happens when you need to start making more mid-tier solutions, right? Right now, this is a very exclusive solution, only available, very expensive. What happens when others step in and start, you know, ramping up. The one thing that, you know, NVIDIA's got this moat, they have their own software platform. And what they've been doing this whole time frame of basically cornering the market is, is building a huge pipeline of customers. So once you're on that platform, you're not going to necessarily want to jump unless there's a huge uh, price differential. So we'll see what happens. I think there's going to be some reactions to other entrants coming in the market. Um, but I do think that, you know, not advice, but I think it does have some more room to run as long as the market um, cooperates and, you know, t- Tesla's, I, I agree with Christian. They've got to get the earnings story. I would say solidified. Um, you know, we, we, I think the first, the first half was about pricing. And if we can just start getting this solidified here and kind of show a trajectory going in the other direction, I think that'll be, a, that would be a good message for Tesla going forward. Great correction, Jeff. Th- thanks. Yeah. I didn't, Consider that uh, that the it wouldn't get updated in in the in the apps yet, um, and and to do yeah. the math. Um, now, I have a question for you, Jeff, real oh. quick. Um, is if they don't make the product and they just design it, right? Is that is that accurate? Yeah. So so Nvidia is designs the silicon, the hardware, mm-hmm. the silicon, and the software solutions and services that run on it. Gotcha. Is there a possibility that it gets commoditized and the product or their revenues start decreasing because mm-hmm. uh, additional people enter? Because, um, mm-hmm. you know, if you're not in control of your destiny by not manufacturing and, you know, being able to do whatever you, you want yourself, is that is this an issue that you see? Not, um, not, it is for the, it's actually limiting, believe it or not, even though they have this massive growth, they're limited by their manufacturing partners and mm-hmm. their ability to scale. So they aren't necessarily 100% controlling their own destiny here. Again, the the two constraints are it's probably not again. We probably didn't talk about this. There is a chip on wafer um, uh, on substrate uh, package. That's a it's a very kind of unique. These are almost like mini computers that are being built. These these H100s, and then the other constraint on top of that is is high bandwidth memory, very high bandwidth memory um, to go to go alongside their GPU. And those two things are the constraint right now. Those are the two things. And what I think happened is at the end of last year, this chat GPT moment happened. Everybody said, like, oh, I got to get these. All these AI startups, you know, started piling in. They're, they're getting funded, so they want to buy them. You heard Elon buying them, you know, for Tesla. So everybody's out there accumulating these, and they just got caught with their pants down from a demand perspective. And again, these are, aren't the easiest things to build. So I think they're going to be able to get through it. They're going to triple. They're going to triple 
production capacity between now and the end of next year. Um, but I don't, I, the, 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 what won't get commoditized to your question is their CUDA software platform. They have their, their own, to, to, to use these tools, you have to use, uh, you know, to use, to use these AI chips, you have to use NVIDIA tools to do development on, and that won't get commoditized. Yeah. Well, okay, so Elon has said, he's already said before that <clears throat> this is a temporary you know, demand uh, not able to provide. There's going to be lots of other competitors going to flood into the market. Uh, but getting back to earnings for Tesla, <laughs> it's the story is going to be FSD, man. It just simply is. You're not going to have explosive earnings coming out from auto business, although they're focused on reducing their costs and so forth. As you can see, the Cybertruck will be an amazing earnings uh, margin uh, higher than most other car vehicles ever. Is what I'm expecting, but wait till FSD comes. Now you're talking software. Now you're going to get the 80 percent uh, margins that we're expecting, and now you're going to get unlimited demand. We're going to have the Nvidia moment. We're going to have the Chat GPT moment, and it's going to be bigger. And we have multiple opportunities for this, not just one for each of these other companies. We have multiple opportunities. We'll have our own AI moment. We'll have our own bot moment. We'll have our own energy moment. Every one of these things are massive businesses. And only some of them will happen like such like this one situation within one month, all of a sudden everything skyrockets. But if you hold off, hold on, <laughs> no one's going to match Tesla. And that's why I'm investing in Tesla, not NVIDIA. I, not, not that it's not, not wrong to, it's just that I think Tesla is going to have even a bigger jump than NVIDIA did. Yeah. And I want to add to that something that Xander said very rightly. Isn't it funny that when we talk NVIDIA, nobody talks about the Fed, right? Now, suddenly it's not about high interest rates or whatever. Um, so if a company has its moment, it does, it does really decouple from the macro environment. And we saw that very well illustrated now with NVIDIA. I mean, obviously it's giving up a bit. There's profit taking. There are people, you know, questioning double ordering and whatever. But uh, but. We have experienced these last couple of days when a story finally carries over, when when there is confirmation of something that people didn't expect in this volume, you get away from the macro, you get away from all these influences that occupy us every day. And so I'm just coming back always to the same thing. So if you are a long-term investor, don't get discouraged by all this noise. This noise at the moment when it counts, it doesn't matter at all anymore. Yeah. All right. And I agree Good. with that sentiment. Long-term, I think Tesla is a great a great bet and a great deal here but um but in the short term nvidia deserves where they're at so mm -hmm. and you could say that maybe their valuation isn't that crazy right with with, with this explosion no. so but yeah great talk. not at all in fact but everything that's happening in nvidia is actually very beneficial to tesla because yeah the whole market's going to go up ai is going to go up tesla's going to go up it's just it's uh, all going to be uh, part uh, together I missed the call. Did did their CEO guide for being the most valuable company in the world? Just, <laughs> just no, he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't have a crystal ball either. Who he knows? He didn't buy low, sell high either, Xander. Oh. <laughs> if he didn't give any investment <laughs> advice. <laughs> Financial right. advice, crystal ball, you got it all. <laughs> let's uh, let's talk Tesla. Uh, big topic, of course, is Cybertruck. We'll also cover FSD version 12 and maybe some bits of Model 3. So this came out, Elon tweeted out just yesterday, just drove the production candidate of the Cybertruck at Tesla Giga, Texas. We're seeing now five, um, quite a bit of uh, Cybertruck sightings all over the place. What do you think, uh, Jeff, when you saw production candidate, what does that mean? You're muted. Thank you. Um, I called that out because those words are meaningful. That, that's the phase actually after release candidate. So they've actually, they've actually gone through a phase since we saw that, that photo with all the employees around the first truck being built. And now they're in production candidate phase, which is the phase right before ramp. And so we don't know if they're in the beginning of production candidate or the end, um, but that's exciting. Production candidate means everything's coming off a of production process and a production tool. Uh, it's got another, it's got other meetings behind it too, but essentially you're moving from a, a lower volume um, kind of a development tooling type phase into the everything's production worthy, ready for its, you know, its million, you know, run over, over, over some period of time, but it's everything's on production worthy tools and processes. And now what they're doing is my guess is they're doing this is they're, you know, they're doing evaluations and all these, on all these vehicles 
and um, obviously wanted to get Elon's approval because the next phase would be to go into mass production ramp. Gotcha. So that's like an approval uh, process is get the CEO to uh, give us feedback and then, and then I mean, that it's means different at different. Yeah. It's different at different companies, but you know, you want to be showing um, you want to be showing the top person, like this is a production worthy uh, representative vehicle and you would, you'd want their feedback if there's anything you want to change because you're going to go from these, you know, building a handful of trucks today to building a lot more and you want to want to have something flagged later on. And by the way, it's, just, it's not only just how many trucks they're building, it's the supply chain behind it. They're all ramping up well ahead of this. So if they're building, you know, a hundred on a certain period, there's a supply base, one tier, two tiers back that's doing thousands of of parts. So if there's something you'd want changed, you'd want to know it um, sooner than later. So yeah, this is a phase and there'll be an approval phase. It'll be an approval to get out of production candidate phase. What do you guys think about this? Um, that some people are thinking pretty negatively. They, they see comments from Elon saying that while we think, you know, we is our best product ever, it's an extremely difficult product to build. We're in, in uncharted territory because it's not like anything else. When, and then he'll release the delivery date and pricing when we are ready to do so. Some people take that and they think that that's a negative. They think that that means that they're going to be delayed. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, I think that that's what you interpreted, right, uh, uh, Christian? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm just going off of Elon. I mean, I, look, this is a great product. It's a revolutionary product. That being said, Elon, and this is what I've been thinking, he's been talking about how difficult this is to do. And I know there's a lot of excitement, but I, I think, you know, he, the team, they're, they're going to figure it out. They got the greatest engineers in the world, but it is a challenge. And I think Elon's been communicating to that, that this is a huge undertaking to, to mass produce this vehicle. You know, I'm not an expert in the engineering of Cybertruck, but I can, you know, see right in front of my eyes that this is going to be difficult, right? And this ramp might take, once they hit their stride, it might be great, but getting there is going to be painful. It's going to be really painful because, you know, it's unlike anything er ever done, ever tried to do in the automotive. So as great as it will be, the, the ramp to get there is going to be very challenging. And I think Elon wants to do it right. I think he doesn't want to just put product out there. He wants it to be perfect. And if it's going to be perfect, that means it's going to take a little bit longer. So we were hoping for a Q3 event. He had talked about it on Q1. He didn't mention anything about Q2. And I talked about that on the show, you know, about a month ago, that there was no mention of a Cybertruck event. So to me, I just thought maybe there might be a delay. Again, it's not the end of the world, but I, I think that yeah. it's going to be a little bit slower than we thought maybe at the beginning of the year. And, you know, it'll get there. But I think Q4 may be an event and maybe we'll see you know, a few thousand by the end of the year. That's not, that's not my. Yeah. He said precise, not perfect. Okay, get it right. Well, well he said well, perfectionism well, is something. He said something in the email about perfectionism. I'll, I'll show Decision. that leaked email uh, shortly, but I, so I, I don't interpret it that way at all. So first of all, we're seeing Cybertrucks everywhere, correct? They're being driven in multiple states. The rumor is that they're, re they're delivering five to some of these select uh, sales um, centers and then they're going to do the delivery event and they're going to have, you know, five lucky people to be able to receive them at that time. There's already potentially rumors that they're being connect contacted now telling them that they're going to be able to do this. So I don't think that the delivery event is going to be delayed. They're, they're, the trucks are out there. They're, they're making 10 a day is I think what they're thinking. What will be delayed is the scaling and the production later, but that doesn't mean that the delivery event will be delayed at all. Um, I know you had some points about this, Alexandra. What's your thoughts? Yeah, well, the he initially said it will be in September. There's still a chance it could be in September. We've got five weeks to go. Um, you know, and, and as, as uh, Herbert just said, you know, organizing the event itself doesn't take many trucks. It, and, and they seem to prepare one of the sides of, of Giga Austin, putting some, you know, stuff up that looks as if it could be event, eventful. The other, the other indicator is that um, yesterday they announced, on Wednesday, they announced that uh, the 30,000 referral points get you an invite. So obviously there's something brewing. Is there a date yet? I don't know, but there seems to be something brewing. Could be a couple of weeks away. Um, Elon didn't 
give any specs. He's been poked by mo- lots of us, including me, giving us prices, giving us you know the specs of the first models. Remember, initially it was supposed to be a single motor and a tri motor. Now they're at a double motor and probably a tri motor. Which one is coming out first? What are the prices? What are the ranges? Whatever. Um, so these close to two million reservation holders res- reserved something that doesn't correspond to the specs now. So who gets delivered first? Nobody knows. Um, There's certainly going to be some employees getting it first. There's certainly going to be some of the Tesla veterans who are going to get it first. There's some rumors that the all-in conference that is taking place middle of September in Los Angeles may see some at the after party that is called the cyber party. So, that, that, you know, there's sort of breadcrumbs a bit everywhere. And obviously we want to see the good of them. Nothing has been confirmed. And in the end, it really doesn't matter. Whether this car comes out beginning of September, end of September, or middle of October, it it has no influence on whatsoever other than our curiosity and impatience, of which I'm the first one guilty. But it it really doesn't matter. It is such a spectacular product. What, What got me a little bit yesterday, and then I will get there, is the tone of that email. And I just before we get there, I just want to make sure everybody knows. Nobody knows if this email is real. Nobody knows whether it dates from yesterday. When we will look at it, there's a couple of indicators. I think it was at 201 o'clock. There seems to be an ID in the bottom that corresponds to a certain employee. I mean, do I really believe an employee would leak an email where his ID is still on it? There, there's so many things about this email that I'm not comfortable about. But if it is true, I think we should address the elephant in the room. Okay, well, let's take a look at the email. GPT. Yeah, it could be. I mean, that's well. Uh, we'll ask Jeff what he thinks. But here's the email. Supposedly, the email supposedly leaked. We don't know if this is real. And it says, "Elon to everybody. Due to the nature of the Cybertruck, which is made of bright metal with mostly straight edges, any dimensional variation shows up like a sore thumb. All parts of this vehicle, whether internal or from suppliers, need to be designed and built to sub 10 micron accuracy." That means all part dimensions need to be to the third decimal place in millimeters and tolerances need to be specified in single digit microns. And I love this line. If Lego and soda cans, which are very low cost, can do this, so can we. I mean, it sounds like very much precision predicates perfectionism. And it means that uh, he wants to get done so precise that when they can do really scale and just pump this out, just like you can soda cans and Lego. Uh, What was your interpretation, Jeff? Yeah, I had to read this a few times um, because um, to start with um, just a couple of comments, you know, on the event, I agree. It doesn't matter if it's September or October. Um, I don't believe these vehicles are going to stores. I believe these are vehicles that are going for test cases, uh, both for hardware, for reliability, and to the software teams. I believe they've been starved of units and they've been doing things mostly on simulators and they need to get real product to test and validate um, in this phase. So I, I, I wow, believe that these point. units are, are for um, internal use. And, and if you look at how they're they're made, there's no wrapping around the seats. There's no, they, they don't look like they're going to a customer. They look like they're going to somebody internal to the company. But again, I could be wrong. Um, and then in terms of this email, I had to read it a few times. Normally, so when you're having a discussion around tolerances, in the product development manufacturing, you know, phases of work, normally you would have that conversation, especially if you're talking about 10 microns, 10 microns, I think is the width of a red blood cell. Like your eyes can't even see, you know, it's arguable if your eyes can see even 50 microns of Delta or or shift on anything. And usually in the, like in the smartphone world, we're targeting things around a hundred microns or less. And if we have to go less, um, than 100 microns, then we're doing some something called optical sorting and binning, which is like you can't just take this panel, this panel, and just build a truck. You've got to you've got to actually optically bend them so when they get put together, they fit with a tighter tolerance than you normally design to. So I can go off in a very wonky discussion, but normally this tolerance discussion is very early. If you have it, and this is what I don't understand. All right, I, we don't know because there's so many things that get tolerance in a design. It could be the machining. Well, machining, you could, should be do, doing the very tight tolerances, you know, to around a thousandth of an inch. So, you know, some of these things are like, okay, maybe they're not as big of a stretch. It depends what he's referring to. If it's the actual gaps on the car, I don't, I don't know how you, 
you even get to that. And the other thing is I actually don't know how you would actually measure it. Uh, and the fact you probably would need optical inspection equipment or lasers. There's no pin gauges. There's no, that they normally, if you see like final, you know, inspection of a car, they're usually putting uh, gauges in just to, to see the gaps and make sure the fits okay. So the measurement system would also come into play, but, um, but yeah, th these things aren't impossible to do, but it's just, a, it's not the time frame you want to be having this conversation. Um, you normally want to have it earlier, but he's the CEO. I think he's what he's doing. He's trying to drive his team in a particular direction and, and he expects perfection and um, there'll be a cost to everything. Just if you crank down the tolerances on every part, you will pay more for them unless you design them to meet those tolerances originally. So let me repeat that. If you change your tolerances and you make them tighter, you make the specifications tighter and you did not design for them originally, you will pay more for those parts because those suppliers will have to build more parts to get parts inside of your tolerance window. So I'll so leave it there. It why, so why do you think it comes out so late? I mean, this email really yesterday bothered me. I was one of the first uh, people I, I received that and I refused to retweet it, first of all, because I didn't like it, obviously. But the second, because it just seemed so unreal that this would happen now. I mean, I just can't see him going to Austin, yeah. seeing these cars, seeing a couple of gaps. I'm sure there were some, no doubt. Even some, if you if you opened up those those cars, you could see it wasn't perfect at the at certain spots, no doubt about it. And I agree, the stainless steel brings with it that you have to be even more accurate than anything that you can, you know, put paint over it and smoothen it out. But I mean, don't tell me that they're discovering today that stainless steel is more difficult to make accurate. I mean, uh, you can ask any dishwasher producer or fridge producer or anything yeah. else, and they know darn well that stainless steel is a tough is a tough uh, object to make precise. So. So I had two reactions. I mean, if this is true, it really makes me uneasy. It doesn't mean that I don't believe in Tesla, don't get me wrong, but it makes me really uneasy that they would discover this so late and that Elon then would write an email that I actually found friendly. You know, it was like, okay, this is the new tolerance and whatever. I mean, <laughs> I, it, I, I would be if I would be if I would be Elon and would just discover this, I mean, that would be a real I, thing to piss I, me off, right? Can we pause on the second point? I, I completely disagree. I don't think that this is the reaction. I don't think that this isn't like a discovery of any kind. I think this is just setting the stage for an expectation of um, what what you want to see from the workforce who's doing the manufacturing, who's doing who's putting these units together. If you know, and, and Jeff can probably speak to uh, to this better, but my guess is that you know he looked at some things and they're sloppy. And um, he wants to see, and, and he's highlighting what are the engineering challenges that went into manufacturing the product and you know, what the worker should think about. Don't cut corners here because you know, uh, it's, it's shiny, it's, uh, you know, it's, everything sticks out. And so I think he's just setting expectations of, uh, of, of what their target is and what they want from, uh, you know, what they want to see from the work. Can, can we, uh, do you can guys we agree, show disagree? Can we show it one more time? Because I mean, I hope you're right, Sander, but the, the, the phrase that got me is the one about the suppliers. Herbert, if you don't mind. That all parts of this vehicle, whether internal or from suppliers. So this is not just come on bootstrapping everybody. We have to get this right now, you know, extra attention. And it's not as, you know, you know, pull, you know, do this a little bit better. Because if you want to get to sub 10 micron accuracy, you really, you know, it's it's a whole process of, uh, as Jeff explained, of uh, being more accurate from the slightest little part to the very car at the end. And so this is not just, okay, guys, come on, get your act together. We're nearly there. Uh, do it a little bit better. This is much more, this is this is much tougher what he puts in there and, and addresses the whole supply chain. Yeah, I, I disagree too. I, I'm, on, I'm on Xander's side here, which is, okay, look, do you guys really think, who hears, okay, who votes, okay? The delivery event is not delayed. We are seeing many, many, many Cybertrucks being produced and delivered to many of these service at sales centers today. We just I don't heard think the delivery yesterday. Event means anything? What does it mean? I, I, I agree. I, I agree. agree Deliver about Xander a little bit. I'm a okay, little well, concerned. Let me just finish. I hear what you got. Fight, bull fight. Let me finish my <laughs> yeah, points here little, first. We got a little fight here. <laughs> let me finish my Spice points first of all. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. No, I'm glad you are. So number one, we're just look at what's happening, right? He just drove the production candidate. Yeah. We're seeing actual cyber trucks everywhere. These aren't fake. These are real. They're being driven everywhere. We're seeing an invite coming to an invite event that's now sent to all of us saying, hey, if you've got the right referral credits, we're now setting it up. We want you to be invited to the event. So the actual delivery event has not been delayed. That is happening. There is actually cars being made now enough for delivery. The question here is whether or not they can scale faster. He wants us to be so precise that when we do the scaling. So I don't think, I think the production candidate is fine. It's going to go, it's going to be passed through. He wants now to be very precise, make it precise so that we can stamp these out like crazy fast and that's the goal we're trying to do so that's how i interpret it not that this Absolutely. some people are going to say everything's now delayed oh my gosh you know the the cyber is going to be a year behind that's not what's happening guys H has no, anyone, I agree. don't we know employees i don't understand can we not confirm this email mm. because i think i agree with with alexandra saying that we're designed in the supply chain that makes no sense because like specifically exactly. saying the word design it every like like jeff said everything is done you're mm. you're 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 trying to ramp your designs not uh, create them now to that scale so and change I don't know. that was the point i was gonna make yeah that that word tripped me up in the in the email because that would um he, he said yeah need to be designed like in the future yeah that's, that's right yeah. the only yeah. thing i'll say from a detective you know elon knows this is out if, if this is not true elon can knock this down very easily and say that you know that that's not me and and i come back who in the world puts an id on a yeah. leaked email i mean this whole thing that it really gave me a bellyache and i said no i'm not reposting this this is the, again i had it as early as omar and and uh and i thought and I'm not doing this if somebody else wants to throw this out, but I found this really half and half, is it true or not? I I, I mean, if it's true, again, it doesn't give me a bellyache not to be in Tesla, not at all, but it would give me a bellyache if this dated from Wednesday and was a real email. Now, if we have to prove it's from Wednesday, it's a real email, we'll live with it. And they may bring out the first cyber trucks as they are now and are just trying to optimize for whatever the production January onwards or whatever, who knows. But uh, but, but it, it just, it didn't give me that feeling of being uh, uh, authentic. All right, well, here we go. Here's the photo, remind you, this came out yesterday. Okay, what? Elon it's Musk, murky. I drove the I production candidate at Tesla Giga Texas and yeah, that's, that's him wild. driving it. And by the way, uh, Corey Steuben, just by looking at this video or this photo, he said that he congratulated them for the fit and finish. So, I, you know, I mean, obviously it's just a photo. He doesn't know, but um, come on, guys. Why did are we you see no, that it's a conspiracy oh, theories? Remember, remember, as investors, you don't want to just be everything wonderful. Why? You start thinking about, okay, what expectation? I'm saying like it might no, not be. No, you're the opposite. Exactly you're like doing fear, 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 good. fear. I mean, be. like. No, it's not fear. Yeah. I'm not nervous. I'm just saying. If we come back in a month and Cybertruck, yeah. we barely get, you know, a few thousand out after everyone's saying so many and, and they're having no, problems. No, I, I don't expect, I don't expect more than a couple thousand. I'm not expecting more than a couple thousand. He's already guided mm -hmm. that it's going to be very small numbers this year. We're yeah. talking about mass scale for next year. In fact, when I see this, I'm happy. He's saying I need it to be so precise within nanometers, micron accuracy, so that I can stamp this out like a soda can. That's exactly what I want to hear because I'm okay with it being small numbers this year. That's what he guided, but I want it to be massive numbers next year in the following years. And that's what he's guiding now too. So that's, I see now, this as positive, see, not negative. Did you see that Thursday morning picture where he had the cyber truck from the air and behind a white something, maybe a Model yeah. S, maybe a Model, Model 3 Highland. It's a Model maybe. S. Okay. You all think it's a Model S? Yep. Yeah. So why in the Lots world did he put the Model S back there? They're saying that was his car that he drove to that area. <laughs> I, don't I think they did that. I think they did the drive in an airport. So there's no, there's no ability for drones to fly over. It's a no fly area. So I think that's probably where he drove the car. Um, so yeah, the, the other thing I don't get is, is everybody online. I, I, again, I'm no, no, no offense to anybody, but just what are the specs of the car? He's not going to release the specs of the car. Do they have the delivery event? So, I mean, that's, that's, that's specs and pricing. They want to tell a story of like, we, like it can tow this much. It can do this zero to 60. It does this, this, and this. 
And then after you get everybody built up, okay, here are the prices for this amazing thing. I just don't, I don't, I've never heard of Tesla releasing specs and pricing before the event. So the question is, is when is the event? I think that what the event will mean is like, they're going to, they're going to package together pricing and the story of the product and how it performs. But in terms of like that event, meaning like the car is ready or there's many of them or there's few of them. I'm in the camp that there's going to be very few in the beginning. I think they're going to be very careful building this yep. up. And I don't believe any of these cars that we see on these trailers are production vehicles. When you're in production candidate, you're not in mass production. You're not in ramp. You're in the prior phase two ramp. It doesn't mean that one of them can't be worthy of production or two of them or whatever, but those aren't, that's not a build from mass production. That's a build from and the that's phase That's why four. I think they will not be given to end to usual retail customers but to yeah. employees and some veterans who understand that and know that you know they may have car number 17 and it may not be for perfect but they have the Correct. privilege of having car number 17 and that's not uncommon. <clears throat> exactly it's exactly right okay i think we spent a lot of time on this topic um yeah. you know i think in move general on. yeah move on i think in general though as we talk about tesla it's the same story seems to be the same pattern right which is things take a lot longer than we realize but the reason why they're doing that is because uh, they want it to be scalable and they're building design for production and so forth and the same thing with fsd as we saw here so we wanted to talk about fsd version 12. um who wants to say anything about it i mean it's basically delayed as we know he's been promising for a long time but as i've been reporting and ashok aswami did his videos They've found an incredibly new model that's uh, being driven by the machine learning AI system that's learning on its own. And that's what they're waiting for. This whole thing is now, everything has now been, designed. what did he say? He sent out a tweet saying that it's been completely rebuilt and everybody's freaking out. I know you did, Christian, rebuilt. But if you saw the second word that he said was rebuilt by AI, 99% by AI, that's the difference. Yeah. Do you, okay? do you no, guys understand? Good. Do you guys understand what that means? Um, I, I was I was chewing on that, and so the previous version of FSD was something like three hundred thousand lines of man written code that is now uh, I think he said two factors, um, uh, two orders of magnitude. So we're talking what three thousand lines of code that is just guiding the AI on how to process uh, and make decisions, right? So that's what he's saying here. And that is, uh, you know, this is where we, we need Omar, the, <laughs> the coding expert to, uh, to, to break this stuff down. But um, I, I think it's, it's tremendous what, what, what he's communicating that previously, um, perhaps their compute, uh, that's another thing that I wanna highlight. He, he says that they are not uh, like engineering um, constrained, they're, they're compute constrained. And so they weren't able to, I guess, have the, the, the system process, um, the, the video for the neural nets. So um, th I think this is, th that's, that's what I'm waiting for, is this yeah. FSD breakthrough and, where, where, where revenue starts piling in. Exactly. And where no competitor will be even close, right? Because when we have, always hear these Wall Street people and Gary say, yeah, but somebody else will be able to have it at the same time. I mean, maybe in a couple of years, they will be at the old solution, not at the V12 solution. This moment where it goes down from man-written code to the much more compact machine-written Neuralink situation, that is when... Um, you really make the difference. And I don't think people understand that, but the, you know, by simplifying it and making the whole reactions and interactions so much more compact, that's where you leave everybody behind. Yeah, I got something juicier. About a year ago, I said, Elon should do an FSD drive and like put it out there for the whole world. So he was supposed to do it a few weeks back to go to Zuckerberg's house, he didn't do it. Now he said he might do it like tomorrow night. You, got, you guys think we're gonna see uh, Elon FSD video live stream on X tomorrow night. Yes or no? He's mm -hmm. trying to squeeze it in. So we're waiting <laughs> yeah. it for yeah. it to be squeezed in. Yeah, I think it's real. Look, at this point, FSD is solved. What I mean by that? What I mean by that mm -hmm. is you can see, you you can see that they've already said that we've now pretty confident that the system we've built, or that the system that you you met neural nets is now to the point where it can determine everything. We're now just constrained by compute power. 
And so we're just waiting for that to happen. Now, there could be a surprise. There could still be another surprise. But at this point, they're confident that it's just compute power constraint at this point. So um, I'm pretty confident about it as well. So we don't see it. We don't. We still see many mistakes. And that will still be something we're going to see every time we see a beta. But Well, well I think, um, I th yeah. hold on. So V11, I think this was a response that Elon had to Omar, like V11.4.7 or whatever it was, that like, yeah, that that's good. But 12... 12 is the he is always says first that. Yeah. No, Mind but blowing. hold on. This is the this is the <laughs> important thing for everyone to realize is that th this has been rewritten by AI. Think about it. Uh, the best example I heard um, I don't remember which video this was, but it was excellent. Was that it's like a chess engine who's telling you what the move should be and now you have the computer or the human who wrote the code overruling what the move should be, even though the computer thinks so many moves into the future, unlike the human. So, so think about that. I think it's a huge deal when you, when you, you know, if you're an engineer. And then to Alexander's point, I think other competitors, I think comma AI is written in, um, in this simpler uh, manner where, where it's, uh, uh, you know, neural nets. So, but they're just not as as developed with number of cameras, and so they can't do the whole stitching and uh, frames. But uh, okay, yeah, just I think to clarify, it's a huge deal. yeah, Tesla has been building everything with neural nets. But what they've explained was they used to have a neural net for every single edge case. So you have a neural net that this, that determines if you can recognize a stop sign, a real net to help you do parking, and so forth. What they decided to do and realized was you didn't need to do that. You just create the system, one giant neural net, one computer system that figured out everything on its own. It is learning every edge case on its own. And it's figuring this out by itself by just feeding it all the video and giving it as much compute power. And that's why the confidence is there that this thing is now learning so much, so fast. It's just compute risk constrained. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, so next up. Yeah, I mean, I don't know much we want to talk about model, uh, model three. Did you want to say anything about that, Alexandra? No, I think we said what we could. I mean, my, my theory is that the Cybertruck event will only be ready when Fremont and Shanghai and distribution to Europe and wherever else is ready for the remodel. So we know in Shanghai we're very close. Um, Fremont, we don't have any news yet. We, you know, we anticipate some of the factory closing in September still. So that may be the phase that they wait to be finished before that Cybertruck. So I do believe that Cybertruck event You're, isn't wait. just depending on the Cybertruck, but also on Model 3 revamp to be ready. Okay, well, I'm confused. What? Yeah, because when people see the Cybertruck, they will go on Tesla's website. They may not want to buy the Cybertruck, but they want to, you know, inform themselves about, I mean, Tesla will be the most Google search term the day Cybertruck goes out. You, you can be sure about that. So at the moment, they are yeah. purging all the inventory they still had, they still have on the classic Model 3, but they want to be ready for higher margins, with the revamp. The whole revamp is not only about does it have the lights a little bit different or whatever, it's a completely different cost basis. It's gonna be a higher margin. It's gonna be easier and quicker to produce. So when that is ready, which it will be ready, I mean, there, there is no coincidence this all happens in September because they want to be ready to then bring out in mass these Model 3s because that is the car that will be sold after the Model Y the most until people get can get their hands on the who, Cybertruck. Who here believes that Model 3 and Cybertruck, they're trying to do it together simultaneously? I don't know. Um, I can see them trying <laughs> to leverage the event. So, you know, because yeah. event planning takes a lot out of an organization all the way from the CEO down to the the engineers involved. So I can see them trying to pull the two events together. If they're, if they're very close in proximity, I can see the value in pulling them together. And I agree with, with Alexander, if... Once it's going to drive a tremendous amount of website traffic, why not have, you know, both of the products available um, to order? If you see other launch events, they try to cluster them and cluster products together as well, too. So you get a halo effect. Okay. I'm, I'm not as convinced. I'm not as convinced. I think Cybertruck is such a big product. It deserves its own 100% just Cybertruck. And then, oh, by the way, there's a I don't new think, Model 3. I don't, I don't think the event itself will be concentrating on the Model 3 revamp. I don't think that's it at all. I think it's just, it will be there. I don't think there's a Model 3 event going to come. Not at all. Okay. It's just, that is the Model 3 that will be available then. 
Yeah, I, th I th think that's the great point mm -hmm. is just uh, what she's saying is, is that you're ready th that, you know, you're not uh, this one's not available. This one's not available. Right. That everything is is uh, firing on all uh, electrons by the time the Cybertruck comes out. Exactly. And don't forget as well mm -hmm. that that Elon told us Q3 will be slightly below Q2 numbers. Right. So but they still maintain total year numbers. So to get to those 1.8 plus million cars sold, Q4 has to be extraordinarily big. We all know it's not going to be the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck is going to be a couple of hundreds, low thousands. So that's where everything else has to be pumped out. Well, he said production would be lower. He didn't say deliveries. Yeah. Yeah, because delivery delivery will have a good benefit during July and August from the inventory that was still available from the Model 3s then at the end of Q2. Right. Good points, yep. guys. Good okay, stuff. so Model 3 Highland probably out before October. And then the delivery event probably in September. You heard it here first. <laughs> guaranteed by Alexandra. <laughs> the oh, guaranteed, of, guaranteed of nothing at all. Pulled right out of the air. <laughs> <laughs> you convinced me. Yeah, I was like, like no, and then now I'm like, you make any change my mind. So thank you for that. So let's talk the stock market. Um, I think we did NVIDIA versus Tesla, which is a great topic. Do we think Tesla's Jackson stuck? Hole. I think that, and then tell me about the Fed that's meeting and what's going to, I mean, yeah. there's deflation in China. Come on, Fed, what the hell? Go ahead, guys. No, tell me. Pal, let me talk about a little bit of Jackson Hole. Yeah, Tesla, Tesla stock has been stuck. Let's be honest, that's stuck. But let's talk about Jackson Hole. So, um, we got Pal um, coming up. He, I think, you know, I think we had Q3 GDP. I saw estimates 5.9. These are ridiculous numbers. Like all, all the leading indicators are pointing down. Everything is pointing, you know, possible recession. But we have this economy that just keeps on chugging, right? Low unemployment. You know, the Fed, if you remember the last jackson hole it was eight minutes it was real fast and he said there was gonna be a lot of pain well there hasn't been much pain right basically unemployment has been the lowest right people are getting jobs um wage inflation is doing you know decent people are keeping up but inflation still is a little sticky right people are still i watch a lot of videos people are complaining there's a lot of people in this country and we could talk about you know what is it uh rich men north of richmond a lot of people are struggling out there, and, and Pal talked about this, with, with basic items, right? Putting food on the table. You know, sometimes we don't really think about it because everybody's in a little bit of a different situation. But I think, you know, remember, inflation is the rate of change. So as we keep getting these high numbers, it's on top. It's not like it's going down. It's just that inflation is coming down, but it's still higher than it was, you know, a year ago or a month ago. So it keeps escalating, right? So I think Jay Powell, with a good economy, the stock market, you know, is not that far from its highs. We have a little bit of a pullback. I don't think he's going to be that dovish. I don't know what's going to happen, but I think he's going to use this to still, because he won, his number one goal he's been telling us all along, he wants inflation down. And if you remember in the 70s, we got inflation down, and then they kind of, you know, pulled uh, off the trigger a little bit, and inflation reaccelerated. And Powell's talked about this too. So... I think he's going to use this moment because there's really nothing um, in his way to, to keep the, the pedal down, to keep inflation down. And I think he's going to use it. I know a lot of people talk about the election next year, but I, I think that's still far enough away where he could still talk a little tough. And so we'll see what happens. But I think Powell's still going to be, you know, not very friendly to markets. Um, and so I love to get everybody else's thoughts, but I, I I, I think that we're going to be um, have another uh, J Pal um, hawkish J Pal. Yep. Um, as a business owner, I, I I'm in pain. Um, you know, you say obviously for people, uh, and, you know, grocery prices and and but you know, I'm very lucky. I have four locations, but my uh, gross profits are down my cogs are up my labor's up insurance up er, accountant yeah. every single every single entity out there um is, you know from fees for credit cards to uh you know to <laughs> to licenses all of this stuff costs more uh, to do business and if i didn't have four locations um, i'd be in trouble so 
Yeah. I hear you. And I hear from a lot of small business owners because, you know, that's my day job um, that are that are really struggling. And I would like to know, and probably Jeff can help me on that one. What is going to be the outcome of that strike in Detroit, UAW? It, it, you know, it, is that now likely? And if it is, um, what's going to be the impact on those OEMs if they if they strike and, and get a serious uh, increase? Yeah, no, it's a good question because I think it, it it's a it could be a fairly big economic event if not managed properly. So there's about 150,000 um, union workers at um, the the big three, um, GM, Ford, Stellantis. But behind that, there's suppliers that feed, you know, all of all of those plants. And you're talking about there's up there's estimates of three million. Uh, U.S. workers that could be Im impacted if if the big three say we're not building cars, they're on strike. So um, these talks, so there was there was kind of a rebuttal back from I think Stellantis last week, and famously the new UAW president who's being very boisterous, very you know just like I'm going to fight for you know all my union workers and just very kind of um, you know stern in his approach, and he ripped it up I guess on on TV and threw it in the garbage. Um, so I, I believe they're going for a vote today. I don't know if um, we'll, we'll get the results here pretty soon, but essentially they're going to all their members today and saying, do you give, you know, the president, Sean Fain, um, who's a UAW president, do you give him permission, you know, to strike? And usually the, the union members will vote in favor of that because they want to, they want to see if they can get higher pay. So they want to give him an opportunity to take a swing at it. But when you look at what they're asking for, um, they're asking for a set of terms and compensation that would basically continue and accelerate the spiral of the big three automakers in the U S you're, you're talking about over a couple of year time frame, 40% increase in pay, a reduction in work hours. Uh, they want to unionize the, the battery supply chain labor force that feeds, um, all the big three, even though these are, you know, joint ventures with other companies. Uh, they want to unionize them. Uh, there's a number of things on the table, um, but this could have a fairly big impact on the economy if 3 million workers are on furloughed or, or thrown out of work. And, and, and more importantly, what does it mean for the future of the big, like what's, what's, gonna, what's gonna be on the other side of this? They're gonna come to some sort of conclusion. Uh, right now, the strike date is, I think, is in mid-September. If they don't come to terms prior to that, they will strike. There's um, discussions of, you know, does Biden get involved at some point beforehand to avert it? Because there's so much, there's so many workers involved in this. Um, so the question is, is what will be on the other side? There'll be some pay increase. And this all this will impact their cost structure um, for all these companies. So I know when people saw Stellantis kind of moving ahead of Tesla, you know, in, in, uh, in, um, in EBIT profit, just hold on. I think there's going to be, there's, there's some headwinds coming for them, not only on the economy side, but there's also headwinds coming for them, I think in terms of their, their cost structure. So we'll see today, uh, they're going for the vote and then they have till mid September is the key date in terms of strike or no strike. Yep. And if they strike, it's going to be all three automakers at the same time. It's not just going to be one. Yeah, and there are rumors that they actually would appreciate a strike, right? Would be give them a good reason to uh, halt production and whatever. I, I don't think anybody wants a strike. I mean, I I, I don't believe those rumors at all. But uh, it comes with a lot of side effects. It comes uh, side effects to all the six tiers of suppliers. I mean, if this really happens, this is going to be major, major, major. Okay. Another incredible scenario that's happening right now is we just heard that uh, this morning that the DOJ is suing SpaceX for allegedly alleging hiring discrimination against refugees and asylum seekers. This sounds very silly. It's crazy. So the U.S. Department of Justice sued SpaceX. Um, so the lawsuit says between 2018 and 2022, uh, SpaceX wrongly claimed that expert control laws limited its hiring to U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents. This seems so opposite of what you'd expect, that the space agency should be limited and not to be able to hire, you know, be forced to hire just anybody. Um, so our investigation found that SpaceX failed to consider or hire asylees and refugees because of their citizenship status. 
And then it says here that, um, that what is it, the last bit here, there. So nearly a four-year period across more than 10,000 hires, the company hired only one individual who was an asylee and identified as such in his application. Yeah. Who wants to take this on? So I want to take this on because I work in immigration for the last nine years. I'm no attorney and I don't know how this case is going to be judged because you never know when you go into a law case, may settle, may whatever. But one thing that's for sure is if you are working in such a sensitive industry like SpaceX is, um, you're usually not allowed to um, hire anybody that doesn't have a green card or is a U.S. citizen. For most of them, you actually have to be a citizen. Even green card holders don't don't qualify. Don't. So seeing that somebody may be an asylum seeker, meaning hasn't even gotten asylum yet, which would give him the green card and then five years later citizenship. So, you know, we're really very far away. Uh, seems the logical thing to do. So somebody may have found a loophole because what I think happens, or at least I know it happens on the Tesla website, is um, when there is a new applicant, they ask you whether you need to get immigration status before you could accept the job. I think that's how the question is formulated. If I remember when I... Uh, did that for one of my kids who who took on a, a temporary position a year ago, two years ago, um, which is a, a very you know good question because as an employer you're not allowed to to employ people that don't have employment authorization. I'm sure Xander knows very well with his four shops how it happens. You have to fill out what's called an I nine. You have to make sure they have employment authorization mm -hmm. or are green card holders or are citizens. So there's a whole procedure in place. There's e verify now that is uh, that is online. So what I'm sure happened, or what I I mean I'm sure no, but what I suspect happened is that um, SpaceX given the sensitive nature of their contracts, of their information, of their proximity to, you know, state secrets and and uh, and their missions, uh, made it very clear that only people with a certain resident status or citizenship were allowed to take certain positions. Now, is there a loophole that some asylum seekers for certain positions that may have not been as sensitive should have been considered or not? Maybe. Maybe they were over you know, prudent, maybe. But this, I mean, it's just blown completely out of proportion again. Uh, you know, making it sound as if Elon and his companies would not be pro-immigrant, where, the, I mean, Elon himself is an immigrant. Elon himself had to go through all the loopholes to get his, in the end, U.S. citizenship. Uh, this company has employed so many people that are not born in the United States. So I doubt very much that they made a mistake here. And if it was a mistake, it was certainly a genuine mistake in order to protect the United States rather than anything else. Yeah, it seems silly to yeah. me. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it just seems targeted. I appreciate Alexandra going through the whole, like how is how this should work. It just seems, just seems targeted. Yeah, I instantly thought of it's SpaceX. They can't hire like it's this is sensitive stuff, government things that you. So yeah, I just I sh shake my head. That's all I could do. And thanks for the explanation, Alexandra. That's great. <laughs> all right, let's move on. So there's more questions we want to talk about. More topics. Politics on X usually called Twitter, politicians on electric vehicles, can't block on X. Who wants to get started first? I mean, let's talk, let's talk about blocking on X. So I think that that's a good topic. Um, so obviously there was a big uproar when Elon mentioned that he thinks that um, they're going to stop allowing you to block people on Twitter, X, except for di direct messages. And just tremendous outpour of people complaining, saying that, listen, there's a lot of... Um, you know, really evil people, stalkers, um, just bad intentions coming after you. It's nice to be able to block somebody. But I think what people are forgetting, and I think they're trying to clarify, is that while they remove the feature of blocking, they're going to expand the feature of muting. And there's ways that they can still allow you to not, um, to not allow the other person from being able to respond to not only your tweets, but your comments and replies. And so, you know, people should be able to read everything out there. And if they wanted to, they can easily just um, kind of, uh, you know, create another account anyways and see everything you're writing. But it's a, it's whether or not they can respond to you and communicate with you. I think that's just expanded mute. That's my understanding is that wait until they explain what the new mute will be and that they think that they have a better uh, system. What was your reaction, guys? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, I, I, just me personally, I don't usually use the block. Um, it's just something I never did. So, I mean, look, I don't know what Elon has in mind. So, I, you know, it didn't really move me either way. Like, I think it really did move certain people, like some, some you know, women that, that use X now. Um, I see, you know, just what they wrote. I, I see that it bothered them because, you know, they're harassed. So it, it's a mechanism that they've used that they know works, right? Because it, it kind of like blocks that person from seeing anything that they're doing. And, you know, so I, I can understand what they're saying, but, you know, for me personally, I, like I don't use it much. I'm sure Elon is going to, and the team, the X team is going to work on, you know, getting this right, because this is a big deal, right? There was an outpouring of, of concern. So, you know, I don't think it's, it's that big a deal um, as long as, you know, the team gets it right. Right. But I'm sure they'll change it if, if it's not. So, you know, I'm sure they're they're working and they're testing on it and they're making sure that people are okay with it. Um, but I think again, it's just Elon throwing something out there and you get this like voracious response, like because you know you just see it and everybody just kind of kind of goes with it. But you know, I I think it, it's going to be fine. I think Elon and the team will figure it out. Yeah, I don't think his intention was to uh, you know upset people that ha you know have been uh, harassed or or threatened or, or or any of that. I think it's really to you know eliminate the announcing to the other party that you're blocked and don't talk to me that that kind of thing and you're just muted so you don't they don't know that you've muted them and and you don't see them in your feed and so um perhaps they can make sure that you can choose whether your mutes are also don't allow that person to communicate or you don't want to see your mutes or i, I think they have a strategy figured out of it go ahead Elton. You're muted. You're, you're muted, Alison. <laughs> you're blocked. I'm muted. I'm muted. Not blocked. <laughs> so the, the one thing I wanted to add, I think the rollout was subpar. I think what would have made much less noise and be, you know, much less painful, yeah. especially for all these ladies on here, because we, we suddenly felt, oops. I mean, it was nice to keep certain people a bit distance because we're a little bit thinner skinned. Um, is if we would have had this enhanced mute button first and tested a couple of weeks and then said, okay, now blocking is not possible anymore because everybody would have been comfortable with it, right? Just announcing, oh, we're going to stop block. A couple of days later, oh, we're going to improve mute. Okay, you know, just everybody had this, oh my God moment. It's okay. I mean, I think everybody got used to it. We're going to trust them to make a good mute button. I think Linda has a heck of a job to make this a good mute button because lots of people have expressed how strong this mute button should become. And uh, we're all giving them the benefit of the doubt, but the uh, rollout of the idea could have been uh, a little bit better. Yeah. It, it sounds like uh, that it's something related with advertisements. So if you block a bunch of people, then they can't view your tweets and therefore there's less views. Um, but it's also part of the free speech thing. Like, can you stop somebody from seeing what's happening out there? Uh, but you have to protect people too. So there is such a thing as, uh, you know, restraining orders and things like that, right? Uh, so the there has to bounce. be something strong. Yeah. But but also, I think you could, I just noticed this, like if someone doesn't, you don't follow someone, you, they could make their tweets private and you can't see, I just yeah. came up to that. I couldn't see anything. It says, you know, mm -hmm. ask to follow the person and they'll see if you, you know, so it's crazy stuff. That's kind of like a block, right? If you like, mm -hmm. so you, there's so many things you could do now other than block to like limit your people seeing your stuff. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, next topic is politics on X. Who wants to talk about politics and what yeah, you've been seeing I, I this happen? Bring this up. Yeah, I wanted to bring this up because I found it was very interesting. So, so on uh, Wednesday evening was the Republican debate in Milwaukee, and I think it was done by Fox News and obviously then on cable uh, on Fox uh, to, to be watched. And at the same time, um, former President Trump didn't want to participate because he seems to want to signal that he's above that, but obviously didn't want to be unnoticed. So went on a Tucker Carlson show, who ex-Fox employee was probably very happy to um, show them that he still exists and has got a good platform. So um, there is now Tucker on X. That's the name of his show. Actually, quite quite well done logo. If you've seen that, the tucker on then has this arrow pointing to the X. So it really fits into the X. Very well done. If you haven't 
noticed yet. It's it's worth uh, looking at it again. And within only four hours, he had a hundred million views. Now the views on um, X videos, as Herbert knows, as I know, we're publishing regularly videos. The, the statistics are not uh, easy to interpret. So I'm, I'm not saying these are hundred million individual views who have seen it from the beginning to the end. They are not difficult to understand how much of it is um, really quantifiable, but it is highly impressive and certainly more than people who watched last night Fox News doing the debate. So that means this single event, and it's not the first one and by far not the last one, has now outnumbered cable TV. Uh, and and that is just that's a turning point. That's a turning point for media and uh, and for any creator. I mean, can you just imagine how much money Tucker Carlson made on this single video because the views, the impressions, everything he gets from them. Um, so so he's probably paid. I mean, he was well paid by by uh, by Fox, but if he continues doing this, he's probably much better paid by X than anybody. Which which actually brings me to the subject that that Elon posted two, three days ago, creators come on X because you can actually make money on X. And more there is interaction, more there are impressions, more there are quality debates, especially going into this heavy election year of 2024, uh, more X will become relevant. And as you've seen, nobody does this anymore on, on or never did on, on Facebook or Instagram. And, uh, and I do believe videos are slowly but surely moving from YouTube onto X as well. Uh, to to say it, it, uh, I was just going to say it's up to 240 million impressions. That's exactly. 240 yeah. million. Oh, I got yeah. yeah. 184,000 reposts. 706,000 yeah. likes. He's going to kill us all. He's going to get all that ad money this month and we'll just all be yep. <laughs> I'm not convinced, guys. Um, <laughs> it's the 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 200 whatever million that's how many people that's saw just, the actual tweet the, the actual tweet, post right. yeah you have to click in to actually find out yeah. the video analytics itself and as we've seen many people there's lots of people who watch for less than a minute yeah and then oh, it, yeah. it's just like all of it in one minute and then all of a sudden very few people watch the whole video because people are not yet used to watching x on video i agree that video will be a big deal they've got a long way to go before it will be competitive to cable, to competitive to YouTube. People don't go to X to watch videos. Now they're adding features that will make it so that you do want to watch videos on X. So that's going to happen. I'm just saying it's not now. And I don't, I don't believe that what you're seeing there is um, something that all of a sudden he's going to make a lot more money than he used to at Fox. I just, I don't agree that that's the case. I don't know. I do I, wonder. I say, Herbert, just one comment. Um, I think on the fact the the debate like cable news is roughly two or three million yeah. people yeah, tune in, struggling. and so if you even if you didn't watch the whole video on Twitter, you're you're probably shown an ad, and that's yeah. what Twitter can go and tell their advertiser advertisers like, look, you posted a video, two hundred forty million views. I mean, who knows how many ads were shown? But anyway, it's 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 compelling, I think. But yeah, we don't no, know I, the whole I, story yet. It's less about X being being so powerful versus the cables are just crashing like crazy. Nobody's watching TV as much as they used to. Yeah. I agree with that. I, I'm, yeah. I agree with you, Herbert. The, the analytics is a little misleading because if you, I think if you get in there, you just like it'll count. But I, I think um, I'm an old dinosaur, so I still have cable and I, I watch the debate. So I, I still think there's a place for that. But I think, what do you guys think about doing politics? the spaces, having it. I think that's great because that's the whole that's point great. of what Elon's trying to do, the freedom of speech. I think that's a great, where people can interact and have discussion. I think that's a great forum. That's why I like it. I love listening to it. I think someone had the space and you could just hear the debate and then they would talk a little bit and, and, and about, you know, when there was a dead space. Meet so Kevin. I think that could be Meet used uh, mm -hmm. very well. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's a good thing. And, and to the yeah. Tucker part, can he be compensated? Because when he left Fox, I think there was some, you know, he came to X, but I don't know if he could get paid yet. There was like some of that. So I don't know if he's even able to be comp uh, compensated yet. And maybe that'll take a little bit longer. Or maybe he can. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You no, are no, a dinosaur. My, my parents <laughs> just got rid of cable and we're talking this about one. dinosaurs. And they switched to YouTube uh, premium or whatever it is in the YouTube uh, TV. <laughs> 
and they were paying like 150 or something and that was after calling now they're paying like 80 bucks they're much happier mm -hmm. the objection was my mother said she had recorded shows and i had to explain to her that digital television allows you to watch all of those shows whatever you want on your schedule versus you watching it on their schedule Come and so like Christian, please save yourself some money and maybe, I don't know, uh, give it to Especially uh, you. Boomer House. Now Boomer that House. Yeah, you know? There we go. Well, I do both. I have to say, cable still is very convenient. You can just voice everything in, everything's at your fingertips, all the streaming's at your fingertips. It is costly, but if you don't mind that, it's still convenient to have, have it. Check I, into I Hulu. That. We have Hulu, and when we wear boomers here, so I tell you, half the <laughs> yeah. price, double the service. Christian's the real boomer. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it forever. I just keep it. I think I'm That's the youngest it. of all of you guys. How actually. much did you, you pay? Have, you have How a, much do you, you pay? Have a landline too. It's expensive. You have the landline. I bet you. Exactly. Come it's on, you made me, you made me wait for my for my <laughs> buck a month. I don't know how long, but there he oh, throws yeah, it out on. I, that's amazing. But he is now, he's <laughs> not there. <laughs> no, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Jeff, and and that cable? debate was very entertaining last night. I'm not, we're not going to get into all of it, but it was very um, interesting to see the dynamic. Vivek, the young, you know, very, very well spoken, has great lines. Again, seeing the old guard, you know, Pence, Christie attacking him, trying to, you know, knock him down. So I think he's second in the polls, right? And you had DeSantis there in the middle. So, you know, it was very intriguing. I'm a political junkie. I just like the idea. And so this will progress. So it'll be very interesting to see. And like like Alexander said, Trump kind of staying above it. Um, so this will be interesting. But watch Vivek. He's very personable. He's in touch. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to draw attention. He knows he's very smart. And um, I think he could be a player. So let, let's watch this. I think he could yeah. be young and he could do something. You probably remember, I don't know, a year ago when we talked ESG, I already talked about him. He was really early on one of the big ones going on to ESG, and he was spot on with his criticism. The one thing I hate with him is he is always flipping it much too much to the right side, right? And it becomes pro-fossil, um, yeah. pro-carbon and all that. So there, there is a fine line that he's trying to walk, right? I mean, obviously, yeah. Republican, you you have to have certain themes that resonate with your with your votership, but that that's a little bit his problem. But I agree with you. The little I saw, I didn't watch everything. I watched the whole thing on X on, on Trump. I fell asleep over it when he said five times Panama Canal and how stupid they were to sell it for a dollar. That's why I fell asleep. I remember very well. But anyway, so so um, uh, the, the feeling I had from the little I saw is that Vivek was the clear winner last night. Was that was... Was that your outcome as well? Yeah, I, th I thought he did well. I thought he did well. I think Nikki Haley did okay, but I, I think Vivek was the most vibrant. Everyone else came out a little um, stale, a little feeling a little old. That the old old guard routine. I think we're kind of moving past some of that. I think DeSantis didn't speak very much. He was right there in the middle. He had a couple of lines. I like some of his stuff, but he he's not coming across. His campaign's in a little bit of trouble. Um, he's not doing, you know, he's coming down in the polls. So I, you know, I, I think Vivek was the big winner. So we'll see what happens. There's still plenty of time left. But again, it was very entertaining to see him all on the stage and how they interacted. It was almost, you know, I found it very entertaining. Yeah. I think the key for, for Vivek is just name recognition and just um, yeah. getting that out yeah. there. I think he's so new to so many people. So um, very young. Too, but yeah, it was definitely, there was a young. definite contrast between the old guard and the new. Yeah. Yeah, I like that part that that he's a businessman, so he can try to compete with Trump on on that in that regard. But um, did you guys see the meet Kevin like expose thing about him? Is this true? Uh, because like that was pretty uh, pretty damning from from what I watched. Yeah, I watched it, and I think all of it was quite well researched. I can't guarantee it's true. I, I didn't do the research myself, but he sounded meet Kevin sounded very logical on it. I was actually surprised that he would take so much time because this is not stuff that just falls from heaven, right? You really have to dig for hours and hours into the topics to understand what he he brought forward. But then once you, you know, you listen to it all and you go, oh yeah, that's all a bit smelly. That's not very clean. But then when you think, you know, 
what they threw at Trump in 2016, right? How many casinos went bust and how many uh, rental people had to be delocated. I mean, there was so much they threw at him and yet he was elected that, that I don't think that will matter if really he becomes the candidate or the VP candidate. Uh, I, if, it, if he becomes a candidate, they will throw it at him multiple times for sure. And I think it's actually good that Meet Kevin did that research so that people that get excited about him know this and, and can can put it out there. Well done to meet Kevin. That was really a good research piece. Good stuff. What else you got, Herbert? Okay. You, we're going to close it that's, on anything? That's basically it. As you guys know, I'm not a proponent of us talking politics on this show. I think many of our audience <laughs> will say the same thing. I like it when we're mean? talking you politics. politics on Exile. That was one of your I get it. I, <laughs> anything to do with politics regarding yeah. Elon, with X, Tesla, absolutely. Let's talk about it. SpaceX being sued yeah. by the DOJ, but straight out politics. I know you yeah. guys enjoy this. It's not something I do. We kept it very um, civil. We kept it very civil. It's very civil. <laughs> yeah. So we're perfectly fine today, but it's just something that uh, doesn't uh, doesn't excite me. It's not a topic I want to dive into. <laughs> and I'm afraid that next year I'm going to be diving into it. You all will be diving into it. But um, yeah. Yeah, we'll, well go. Push we'll go on. into the Biden the Biden debates when he debates. Sometimes it does affect Tesla too oh, because politics, go. EVs is political. Like you said, politicians yeah, yeah. on EVs, where do they stand on carbon? So even though it makes you a little uncomfortable, Herbert, sometimes you got to go no, down I that just said, hole to get. Yeah, if it's to get, that yeah, topic, yeah, yeah. we should talk about it. But in general, like let's not let's not do that. Yeah. That's not uh, what my audience wants. That's not who my audience is, and I don't necessarily want to talk about it myself. I mean, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to go dive deep and research it and debate you guys. And I'm going to, you know, defend the positions that silly people make silly statements and we need to like get the facts out. Right. Yeah, so we I, I do like that. We didn't talk about no, Democrats. We just I talked that. about the Republicans. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I do like X. I do think that the community notes make sense. I do wish that when they do space uh, spaces and people make statements that immediately there should be a community note sent out right then and there and that would be just brilliant that would then automatically mm -hmm. like you know uh, uh, make people careful that. what they say I, it's, <laughs> real time no. fact in real time i mean who like like the Why facts not? when you talk in politics it's very hard to discern yeah. sometimes like elon said and i agree you got to leave it up to the people and let them make their own judgments you can't baby feed everybody you know what they should yeah, think there's some things that are completely right. false everybody has their own opinion of what's wrong and what's right you, you can't when say things politics, completely false yeah. either side Either side. Anyway, I just that don't think good. that that's... You want to wrap it up on fun. anything? Yeah, we're all good. Okay, good, guys. Thank you very much. That was great. We covered quite a bit. That is exciting about uh, Cybertruck, exciting about uh, NVIDIA and Tesla. I think things are going to yeah. be very powerful for Tesla going forward. So thank you, everybody. That was fun. See you guys. Awesome. That was fun.